Hello everyone. Welcome to PyTorch Programming. In this series, we're going to learn uh, some of the basic ideas and concepts behind PyTorch that will help us uh, perform at least simpler projects uh, with ease. Uh, right now, we're going to learn about how we can set up the environment, some basic stuff about uh, how things will work to set up an environment to uh, work with PyTorch uh, easily. So, uh, first things first, what we need is a uh, environment we're going to be working with. Uh, now, he, right now I'm going to be working with a local machine. Obviously, if you're going to be working with something like Google Colab or some sort of uh, Jupyter notebook set up on some server, uh, you might not need to do any of this. Your system admin will handle most of this. But uh, considering you might be using your own local machine uh, with a GPU, uh, which is which enables you to perform uh, deep learning projects easily. We're going to be go going over some of the basic stuff that might help you uh, achieve this. So uh, starting from uh, Conda, which is a nice Python environment that is going to help you easily uh, install or set up an environment uh, suitable for deep learning with PyTorch. So Miniconda is very helpful if we just go to the page uh, docs.conda.io and then find Miniconda. Uh, we have different packages here that are suitable. My machine is a uh, Linux 64. Uh, I'm just going to copy the link and then uh, access a terminal and uh, simply I'm going to download uh, the sh file uh, for Miniconda. Now, now that this is ready, I need to be able to run it. This, if we just check, should not be a, an executable as is, right? So we need to convert this into an executable using the chmod uh, command. And uh, once we do that, uh, we should be able to uh, run the installation, right? Yes, so it is asking for a review of the uh, license agreement, which we will carefully read and then uh, agree with. Now I'm going just going to install this in this uh, directory where I am right now, uh, Miniconda 3. And then it's going to start uh, going through the uh, installation process uh, for us. This might take a couple of minutes. So I think that is done already. Does it want to initialize this for us? No. So it's as simple as that. Uh, in order to activate the Conda environment that we've just installed, uh, we have a very simple command uh, using source and then uh, it is in the mini conda directory bin activate. So right now, as you see, we have this base uh, which uh, tells us now we are in there. Now we can make more complicated environments, sub environments even under those, but we're not going to bother with those right now. Uh, this is now when we are in the conda environment very simply we can just start uh, installing any uh, number of packages python packages that uh, we need so right now in this uh, series we are going to need torch and torch vision which we will use in our demos uh, we will install these now i don't need admin access right now i'm just simply installing it using pip in this uh, conda environment and it's all very nicely self-contained uh, within this mini conda folder. And essentially, if I just remove this mini conda folder, all of these packages are going to go uh, with it. So for that, we need to be a bit uh, careful uh, not to cause any issues uh, like that. Right now, uh, the installation there is uh, complete. Now, there are some uh, other nice packages that uh, we might need. Uh, for example, we will be using uh, wisdom. Uh, well, I have used wisdom in my research a lot. This is also a very nice, uh, oh, apologies, pip install wisdom. It's a very nice package for visualization when it comes to uh, deep learning uh, projects. It can be, it can come in very handy. Now, to start off uh, using wisdom, uh, we have to run a live server for it. Now, there is a very interesting uh, package in Linux called uh, tmox. Now, 
and I just ran Teamworks now, it created a new session, a new screen for me. Now, I, I'll be able to detach from this screen, uh, close my terminal, and the, it'll be running in the background, uh, close the screen and still be running in the background, and then I can reattach it very simply. So uh, now I have run Tmox. Uh, you can see with the yellow bar at the bottom of my terminal that uh, I'm in a Tmox session. Now here I'm going to run Wisdom. The Wisdom, uh, you can just run it simply like that. And then I, I'm going to assign what port I can access it with. Uh, it's going to download some scripts and now it is running. So it's telling me that I can uh, access it through localhost uh, port 1234. Now obviously I can't use this terminal anymore, but because I'm running Tmox, I can just do control B, D. I have detached from the screen. And now I have a fresh screen here. Now, if I want to reattach, uh, if you see, I can say Tmox LS, and it's going to give me the name of the, the list of the Tmox sessions I have running. So in this case, I have two running. Uh, if I want to attach uh, the one that I was using, I can do uh, Tmox dash T, and then one was what I was using, was it? It wasn't. Uh, oh, sorry, I have a... Uh, oh, I see. I am forgetting the attach here, of course. Uh, now, this is the wrong session. Tmox attach dash D1. And I'm back into my uh, wisdom run here. So, control B, D. And now I have access to the uh, my, my, my uh, terminal back again. Now, uh, when I run uh, this uh, wisdom server, I can access it through my uh, browser. Here I have SSH to a server I have downstairs but as you can see by running the IP of my server and then port 1234 I have easily accessed the uh, Tmox session uh, here. Now let's see what we can do with uh, Tmox. So let's get into, uh, not sorry not Tmox, uh, we looked at the capabilities of Tmox uh, but Wisdom. Uh, now obviously again if you're using a Jupyter Notebook setup, if you're using something like Google Colab you're not going to need Wisdom. Wisdom is particularly useful for uh, running things on your own local machine or on some server, which, and then you want to be able to uh, visualize the results of your work or inspect things. Uh, there are also other packages, for example, weights and biases. We will be looking at that as well. We'll have a few examples of that. In fact, we won't be using Wisdom uh, after this, but obviously because it's very useful, I thought uh, demonstrating it can be uh, very helpful to you. So I'm in an IPython session. Uh, let me import a few packages I need. So Torch obviously is what we're going to need uh, throughout uh, PyTorch programming. Uh, then Wisdom uh, as we had just imported. Now uh, we're going to make Viz uh, very helpfully. This is going to auto-complete what I need. So I'm going to initialize a wisdom session in my IPython environment. Now then there are a number of things I can do with uh, wisdom and then we can inspect those uh, very easily. One of the things is, uh, for example, text. Uh, let me type something like hello world. And uh, right now, if I go back into my wisdom session, you can see that the box has been created here and uh, I, I have output a, a piece of text here in there. I can create more of these uh, this was auto-completing for me this uh, earlier here. And we see another box here created with the new piece of text uh, that I have. Now we can uh, try this with an image. So we have torch, rand, and then an image of uh, three channels. It's an RGB image uh, with the resolution of 256 by 256. And uh, because of this is a rand thing, is we're going to get essentially random noise as our image. But uh, let's see what uh, Wisdom is displaying to us. As you see, we have an image of 256 by 256. Uh, it is, we have color information in there and obviously it is just uh, random noise. Now uh, this, there might be uh, live updates to a specific image or window I create in Wisdom. So for example, let's look at this. Uh, I'm going through a loop uh, in, in the range zero to 200 and then I'm creating random images and because I'm assigning this label here, uh, it's just going to output these images into the same uh, window, basically. Let's look at what this is going to do. And as you see here, it's updating my uh, image essentially 200 times. 
Now, uh, Wisdom has a lot of uh, different nice capabilities for uh, visualizing things. For example, we can have a, a line chart, uh, as uh, we can see here, a line diagram. Uh, we can visualize different types of data. For example, if we use a scatter plot. Uh, if we have, uh, you can see the result of this scatter plot here. Uh, and you can even rotate here. It's like 3D. It has 3D uh, visualization capabilities. Uh, it's very nice. Uh, we can even have things like uh, wisdom histograms. Uh, so here I have plot a histogram uh, of just a normal distribution, uh, random data. Uh, so as you see, wisdom has a lot of nice capabilities that will enable us to uh, inspect the type of uh, work that we're doing with our uh, project. Now, if you're using Jup Jupyter Notebook, Google Colab, you won't need these, and that's what we will be using from now on in the rest of these series. But if you're using your own local machine or uh, some uh, server compute cluster you're using, uh, Wisdom might come in handy uh, for you. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you have found this uh, useful.